Well, someone in North Korea read the art of the deal. North Korea is threatening to cancel next month's summit between Kim Jong-un and President Trump over military drills going on right now involving the U.S. and South Korea. That is so Donald. Now, this shocks the media, but if, if you just read one sentence from Trump's book, you'd know that negotiations don't proceed without such antics, and more will come. And it's not like Trump didn't prepare you for it. Let's see what happens. We're moving along very nicely with North Korea. We'll see what happens. It's taken a long time, many, many decades to get here. Let's see what happens. We're doing very well on, as you know, North Korea. We'll see what happens. So we will see what happens. We haven't seen anything. We haven't heard anything. Uh, we will see what happens. We'll see what happens. We'll see. Time will tell. We'll see what happens. That montage was for those who think Trump's being played or hopes that he's being played. Better he looks a fool than brings world peace. Right, media? This was utterly predictable once the president was so eager to accept the terms before the terms were even spelled out. Is it possible Kim Jong-un realizes he got everything he's already wanted, which is recognition on the world stage? Did President Trump, do you believe, make a mistake in all of his optimism about his upcoming summit with Kim Jong-un? Wet blankets. Point is, we all come at this with heavy skepticism. With Trump, we trust he's not full of rosy optimism driven by selfish legacy. This is a guy who wields a real stick, not just a yummy carrot, which is why there's real reason to be optimistic, even with the North Korea's threats. Hell, I'd be more uncertain without such threats. It's a sign of engagement. Granted, for this deal to happen, you have to think big and believe you can actually pull it off. Take a way smaller achievement, Woolman Rink, a Manhattan attraction that languished for years because the city couldn't get it running. Trump got involved and in months, turned it into a wildly popular tourist attraction. So why did that happen? Because some guy thought he could do it. Do not underestimate the power of positive thinking, especially when it's coming from someone who knows the good guys from the bad and how to speak both their languages. And look, haven't we seen results already? Today, North Korea threatened to cancel a meeting. Months ago, they were threatening to nuke us. I call that progress. <laughs> Dana, Dana, Dana. Yeah, yeah, Isn't this yeah. how this works? Well, when you're dealing with the North Koreans, I think so. Yeah. Yes, certainly. Um, th that we don't know a lot about Kim Jong Un because mm -hmm. it's called the Hermit Kingdom for yes. a reason. Yes. Um, and I do think that there's going to be some curveballs along the way. I do think that the president has been pretty cautious. He's been optimistic mm -hmm. and um, throwing some cold water on it at the same time right. and almost everything that he says not every time so if there's criticism about that i think that if you look at the at the totality of his statements over a period of time he has been well yeah we'll see mm -hmm. or what does he say we'll see what happens see what happens <laughs> <laughs> the best. we had a lot on the cutting room floor i think yeah. a lot more of that came from and i don't think that the president is going to overreact yeah. because the North Koreans need this summit a lot more than president trump does mm -hmm. so he can sit back and yeah. he can wait and i think that president trump was critical of President Obama's approach to negotiating with Iran because President Obama made it look like he was more desperate for the deal than the Iranians right. were. Mm -hmm. So it looked like, even if I'm sure the Obama team is going to disagree with the outcome, but if it looked like we were more interested in getting this done and rushing it through at the end, that's not actually happening here, um, especially it's just the second year, uh, at the beginning of the second year for President um, Trump. The other key factor here is the South Koreans. I know that the Chinese are really important, but the South Koreans want this more than anything. Mm -hmm. And President Moon is going to be coming to the White House on Tuesday, so the president will have a chance to meet with him face to face. I did think it was a good thing that President Moon said, we are not going to stop these drills with the United States, mm -hmm. because that says to Kim Jong-un um, that he's, he's going to have to come to the table, and I bet that he will. Mm. Jesse, do you have any theories behind this? I do. Uh, they don't involve <laughs> Dennis Rodman, but uh, I, I think what's happening, he's flexing and posturing to make it look like maximum pressure didn't bring him to the negotiating table. Mm -hmm. But in fact, it did bring him there because we had uh, unilateral sanctions we just slapped on. Mm -hmm. He brought the U.N. to make sure they have the blockade over certain vessels. The fuel was drying up. They did had limited access to capital. So that was all good. So that was the truth of why this has happened. Yes, he did 
say some good things. He said, we're going to give the hostages back, we're going to destroy this nuclear testing site, and satellite imagery proves that it is being decommissioned right now, although there could have been an accident that already decommissioned <laughs> it that we have heard. And, um, you know, so good things were happening. I don't like the media coming in now and, and almost in glee that, mm. that there was a hiccup towards peace. Right. Shocking. Just to hurt the president. <laughs> and, and to act like the president has been punked here when I think the last couple of presidents had actually been punked. Yeah. Trump gave up nothing. And like he said, and you showed in the montage, anything could happen. He said something interesting about John Bolton. Mm. He said John Bolton was repugnant. <laughs> Kim Jong-un said that. Yes. yes. Not the president. <laughs> and this is a guy that I think burns his uncles in acid. Mm -hmm. So to call Bolton repugnant was hilarious. I, I think I, what I, he I said before, I would wear that like a badge of honor. I know. If Kim Jong-un called me repugnant, <laughs> yeah, I would no, put no. that on a shirt and be prancing around. That's, That's true. Fantastic. That's true. And I think what he was referring to is Bolton had come in and said, we should deal with North Korea like we dealt with Libya. Mm -hmm. And what happened in Libya? They gave up all of their nuclear stuff to us. And then a couple years later, we invaded and killed them. So that's why he was a little upset well, about that. Yeah. Well, we led from behind. <laughs> Jedediah, I trust you enjoy this view much better. <laughs> well played. Thank you. Well I'll be played. leaving now. Hey, um, what's your take on all of this? You know, I don't think the summit is the be-all and end-all. I think everyone, you know, expected, oh, this summit, it's a good photo op. You see them shaking hands. They're sitting down at the table. But the ultimate goal is for disarmament. And I think Kim Jong-un ultimately thought he was holding all the cards. He mm -hmm. could say, well, well, I don't like Bolton. And, well, I'm not going to do this if you expect me to disarm. And he's not holding all the cards anymore because now he's dealing with someone who has a, a, a pretty strong history of being a tough negotiator. I just want to remind the media, though, when your president is going up against Kim Jong-un, you should be rooting for your yeah. president. Yeah. I mean, that's a pretty across-the-board type of thing. Yeah. Not surprising their behavior, but I think Donald Trump should stay tough. I think he's he's doing exactly what he should be doing. He should just completely unfettered by this whole thing and say, look, my end goal is the same. Um, I'm going to be tough on you. I'm not going to stop talking about human rights violations just because you think that's something we shouldn't be talking about. And I'm going to stay true to American values and American principles and be strong through this whole thing. And that's the best he can do. And you know what? If the summit doesn't happen, we're not going to change our philosophy or the way we handle this because we're the United States of America and that's how we roll. Well, and you were telling me in the green room that Donald Trump, in a sense, already won. Oh, yeah. I'm sure that was me. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was the repugnant one. <laughs> you should put that on a shirt, too. I, yeah. <laughs> but if I prance around, people would, you know, call the cops. Um, <laughs> I would. <laughs> yeah, really. Um, you know what I'm struck by here is that you guys say, oh, it's that liberal press that seems to be the lighting in the moment or suggestion that this might not come off. And to my mind, it's the conservative media mm. that was so quick to say, you know what, this guy's going to get a Nobel Peace Prize. Mm -hmm. This will be his signature foreign affairs sure accomplishment. And it seemed to me like that was a little bit premature. Maybe. Um, because I think he's had a tough week. Uh, I know it's not going to be agreed upon at this table, but you think about what happened this week in terms of pulling out of the Iran deal, which is not popular in the, with the American people. But two, a fantastic move. So whatever you want to say, but I'm just <laughs> saying not popular move. with the American people. Number two, the effort to move the embassy to Jerusalem. Again, lots of deaths. And I know, again, you guys have a different point of view. By Hamas. Uh, whatever you want to say, but I'm just saying very controversial. I like the chiming in. Here to yes, this, you know. Because I acknowledge <laughs> that you guys are smart. And then the third point is the thing about, you know, ZTE, this Chinese company, where he's off on his own, and it's like, well, what's going on? So here comes this motion at this moment, and I agree with you, Jedediah, and Greg, and Jesse, and Dana, Americans should be rooting for President Trump to do something here because North Korea is a threat to world peace. You do not want those people to have a nuclear weapon. Mm -hmm. so, but the thing about it is, and this is my concern, is that I think world leaders now think they can play Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. They can give him a big parade. They can flatter him. They After can you tell just him they love listen to those here. examples about Israel and Iran, you, right. yeah, that's a contradiction. How's that? Because those show that you can't play. Yeah, yeah. Example, oh, no, like those shows. European no, it, I'm sorry. Look at look at the Paris Treaty. No, yeah. but wait, you wanted to say something. No, no, I was just going to say that um, one example would be that you had Macron and Merkel right. and Boris Johnson came to the United States and said, ask the president, please don't pull out of the Iran deal, and he did it anyway. The same the cast of characters and uh, and more on the Paris Climate Accords is kind of the same deal. So mm -hmm. I, I think that. Um, Flattery might get you good press with the president, but it doesn't necessarily get you the results that you want. No, but I think in this case, the idea is that he 
and again, the conservative media are so hungry for the Nobel Prize that I think someone like Kim Jong-un is saying, oh, well, if that's the case, boy, he really doesn't want to miss this meeting. He needs it more than I do. And therefore, if I say cancel your joint military exercises, mm -hmm. President Trump will be under pressure to do it. We'll see what happens. I don't no, think we're not got... hungry for the peace prize, Juan. We're hungry for peace. That's and oh, it was go. just like a nice trophy to shove in the left's yeah. face oh. because Obama didn't deserve his. Oh. Obama's peace prize was a participation Is trophy. That a <laughs> oh. You could argue that getting played was signing on to a deal like the Iran deal, which mm -hmm. actually wound up helping them and, you know, was a minor Band-Aid temporarily and didn't ultimately fix the problem. I just had one last thing that we didn't mention, Mills. which is that the issue of denuclearization and what that means is the key issue. Yeah. And I don't. I, I actually. That's why I'm skeptical on what if there will actually be an agreement. Because he could just be buying time. He could say, yeah. oh, denuclearization in 15 years. Yeah. Meanwhile, and, and, he hides all of his right, sites, yeah. and then all right, of a sudden, exactly. in 10 years, he has nuclear yeah. capabilities to hit the And United also, States. like, if we're going to give economic aid, I want to know, well, who's going to get that economic aid? Mm -hmm. Is it the people, or is it mm -hmm. his, you know, regime yeah. and the cronies? You, so there's right. a lot to be right, bring up that great point, though, about the inspections, because even if they agree to the denuclearization, let's say we're all on the same page, everybody shakes hands and leaves the table, then how do you guarantee that the international inspectors yeah, not the Gets not the self inspections like this, the <laughs> this is the point we got to move on we got to move on but this is the point we are all skeptical and we and we have a president who's skeptical